and a very good morning. It's now Friday morning, just after eight. And today we're going to tackle these uh, decorative cobbled panels and we're going to basically rejoin them um, because they're in a bit of a state. Uh, you can see that one there we haven't taken anything off yet is full of holes and the water will get in there and over the winter freeze and start pushing things off which isn't good because we're above the uh, the main entrance here and the last thing you want is a, a cobble dropping down and whacking some parishioner on the top of the head so that's what we're doing this morning we're going to start off um, just putting a, a couple of bricks in up there uh, the faces had gone on them, so I decided that uh, what we were doing, we'd whip them out and put a couple of new ones in. Again, uh, the, the colour won't match, but what I'll do is get some of the old brick tint, uh, probably a dark tint, um, because there's a lot of black on these bricks, and I don't want them standing out. Right, I'll crack on, and uh, you can sit back and watch what we do. Right, so as always, we've wet up the uh, area where we're going to lay the brick to stop the suction and help the mortar stick. Now the mortar that I'm using this morning, it's not the um, CLM, is it? 35? Yeah, anyway, it's not that, it's a quickline mortar which I made up, uh, I think it was in February we made this one. Um, and it's also got a bit of uh, hair in it. Now, the hair isn't for laying the bricks. It's for doing the um, jointing of the cobbling, uh, just to reinforce it ever so slightly. And um, because of where it is, normally I wouldn't bother if it was like a boundary wall or something. I wouldn't bother with the hair, but up here because it's quite exposed and on the corner, I thought put a little bit of hair in. It's not going to harm. I mean, yeah, it'll rot away eventually, but what the hell? At least it's in there for now, and it'll probably outlive me. Right, let's get a brick in there. So first of all, and what you're better doing is spread a thin layer out onto that wet brick <coughs> first, because then you know that it's got hold of that brick. Then put a, a decent bed on it. Now this stuff's quite wet. And it's very sticky. Very, very sticky. <coughs> Right, so we'll find the, the darkest side of the brick. Make sure that it's not getting any big chunks out of it or anything nasty like that. Put a little bit on the perp there. And then a bit of a wedge on the brick. And what we'll do, once, once the brick's in place, we'll then force some mortar into the top of it with a, st a small trowel. <coughs> That's it, it's just gone back just slightly too far, so we'll just get rid of that and we'll just gently ease it forward ever so slightly. And there we go. I actually think those are dipping that way a bit because it's right with the stone at the top and the, the two bricks either side of it, so I think it's I think it's those are sticking out slightly. So we'll leave it at that, that one. And we'll let that dry in a little bit now before we um, do any jointing, pointing or anything like that with it. Right, so now we've got a small piece to fit here. So what we need to do is put our brick there, mark it up, allowing for beds. And then somewhere amongst the... Uh, tools behind me is a brick hammer. So what we do is we chop right round the brick to the mark we made on it and she comes away clean. And there we go, lovely fit. So I'll just trim up the ragged edge a little bit just to make a neater job of it. There we go, we don't want to be too neat because uh, we don't want it looking out of place. Again, wipe some on that brick so it sticks to it. I mean, 
mean, if you were building up a wall, for example, you wouldn't have to smear some onto the damp brick to uh, before you put your beds on. You just put your bed straight on it. And the reason I'm doing it is, is because we can't compact these. We can't knock them down. It's not like knocking them down to a wire or anything. So if you've, you've squeezed that stuff onto that brick below, you know then that it's 100% it's got hold of that brick. <coughs> so it's, it's going nowhere then. Right, that's that little piece in there. Now that, that bit had eroded away. It was in quite a state, so we know that's good to go now for another 150 years. Right, and then finally, let's move you across very carefully because there's a big gap there and I do not want to drop the camera down the gap. Again, wipe it on. I hope the wind isn't too uh, too noisy on this. It seems to follow me around on this tower. Yesterday there wasn't a breeze around me, and today there is. Right, so again, just tidy this one up. It's going to be the right size. So we want some on there as well. Oh, we're gonna have to trim a little bit off that, it's just a bit tight. Ever so tight. Fit in now. Just put all them beds again. Yeah. Lovely. Right, we need a bit more on that bottom bed. See, as you've seen there, sometimes you, you just drop the brick in and it goes in first go. Other times it can mess you about. There we go, she's in. Forward a little bit. And that's it, it's in place. So of course, we'll, we'll joint it all in when we do the rest of the, uh, the wall. Um, two reasons for that is... One, it's a different mortar, so it'll dry a different colour. And two, it's um, not ready yet for doing. Right, so what's next? Well, next we're going to tackle these. Um, basically, we're going to recoat them. Um, but first, I need to go down and get uh, another tool, which I meant to bring up and forgot. So, like a tool, I've got to go all the way back down. So, we'll catch you in a minute. So how did our uh, Victorian cousins manage to build this particular panel in? Well, they've laid the bricks as normal, only this area would have been set back. Now, this wall here is about a metre thick. So what they'd have done is basically just not laid any bricks here. And the wall at the back, which is at the back of all of these bricks it had been left exposed and then they'd have started laying these one at a time onto the lime mortar bedding that you can see so it's quite a simple thing to do um, at first sort of glance at it but it is actually quite difficult to do I mean for one it's a slow process because these these are granite cobbles and there is no suction in them whatsoever and as you know, lime is very, very slow at setting. So 
you basically, you know, you, you might get away with laying them two and then possibly get them on, and then you'd have to leave it for a while. So I would imagine that they, you know, they, they did the first course on that, then that, and then, and so on. Um, I'm not a, a cobbler by no means. There's a, a local lad, Ian. Um, he's the local uh, cobbler and uh, does all of the historic walls that are in the area. And there's quite a few of them that were very popular because at one time the beaches were absolutely peppered with these cobbles. So they were a great material for doing decorative walls. Right, let's start putting some mortar in this. So we'll start off with a small trowel, a small book trowel. But what I do have is the old Roman trowel. There's a helicopter again. Right, just talk again now that's gone. So we're going to use the little thin top trowel to start with because there's some quite deep areas at the back. We want to, we want to get it right to the back. Now it could be a slow process this. Like I said, I've put a bit of horse hair in this, uh, this mortar as well just to give it a half a chance. It is quite wet. Well, that's why, uh, for a reason. And the reason is, it's wet and it's sticky, so I know it's going to adhere to these uh, these beds because these beds are going to soak. Although I've wet them up, they're still going to soak. So obviously, if it's got a bit of water and it's going to slow that suction down and give me half a chance of it sticking. Just build it up slowly but surely. Now you're not going to come flush with the brick or flush with the front of these. You, you want to leave it set back so that you know you, you see plenty of the cobble. That's the whole idea. You see them sometimes where you've had the uh, the builder and his bucket of sand and cement mortar and he's filled them right to the front and you can barely see any of the cobble. And they look horrendous. I believe one or two locally have got in trouble for doing that because a lot of these walls are uh, down as um, listed structures or of interest. Basically under conservation. Right, so we get the old Roman trail now, so it's quite a big area there, so we can just get a bit in there with the, the old Roman trail. Now, if you get any onto the cobble, doesn't matter you, you can clean that off that will come off quite easily you know a little bit of um, weak acid or a bit of white vinegar or something will bring that up there for you you can always wipe it as well when you're done you know because you're, you're not going to avoid getting a bit on them it's uh it's nigh on impossible to do that. So it's very sticky more to this one. And it's a very mature mortar as well. About eight months old. I had some uh, some kibble left over from the job. So instead of just leaving it, I thought I'd uh, I'd make up a few tubs of mortar and put them into sealed tubs. And that way I'm not uh, I'm not wasting it. But it's made a lovely mortar. It'd be great this for the uh the line plastering to be honest, it's lovely. Make a nice finish. He's got a fine sand in it. But you can see in this <coughs> original bedding these little bits of kibble which is the un unburnt limestone. So it's never slaked. It's, it's just basically limestone that's not got hot enough and uh, is unable to slake. 
wasn't as refined then with the, the burning of the lime as it is today. I think there's a bit of potluck sometimes with it, whether it worked or not, in all honesty. And there we've got a, a deep hole there, with a little bit of loose stuff at the back. Oh, oh, it's pushed through, that's good. Right, so we've got rid of that now. You don't want any loose bits in there, really. We've got plenty of pushback in there. <clears throat> if we just keep building this up in layers. Now, I believe when the Romans were, uh, were building the Colosseum, they did it with a, a concrete. And, of course, today, if you were doing that, you'd form a shutter and you pour the concrete in and have a bit of rebar in it, etc. But what they actually did, they built that up in layers over time. And uh, obviously it worked because it's still there today, isn't it? These panels have been overlooking the town for the best part of 150 years. So it's uh, quite a privilege to, to be restoring them. painters arrive for the clocks at long last so if we get a fine day next week we may just start spraying the clock well you'll have to uh, you'll have to look out for that one on next week's videos Again, we'll get the, the little Roman trowel out. Push a bit in there. And then back to the little trowel. I mean, you could also use what we call a small tool as well, which is a little uh, a little trowel. Um, most plasterers are basically in ownership of one of those. I do have several down there in the van, but uh, today I chose not to use that particular tool. So this is a nice job for a Friday. Just sat plodding. Little panel to restore. That looked quite splendid when it's all uh, all done, all the brickwork pointed up and of course we've changed those bricks that had uh, lost the faces etc. <clears throat> and when they were building the medieval castles of course they had their equivalent of a tower crane and it was a big wooden wheel like a like a hamster cage wheel and a few chaps would get in it and start walking and this was attached to pulleys etc and ropes and it would lift up the big pieces of um, masonry but they found that um, some of the, uh, the people walking this particular wheel were suffering from vertigo so they employed the services of blind people to walk in the wheel. And that way, of course, did no problem with the, the old vertigo. Or so I'm led to believe. So our uh, modern day versions of cranes 
isn't as modern as you think. We had them in medieval times. We seem to have lost it along the way somehow and then picked it up again a bit later on in history. I suppose skills get lost as we were discussing yesterday and then they're not replaced with something new or new technology etc and uh, they're lost forever then forgotten I mean you, you, you look at things like the uh, the ship building you know there's very little of it now being done in the UK and um, you know the, the men that are skilled to do that kind of work are, are few and far between now and eventually we'll lose those skills altogether and we're dependent on other countries to make ships for us And it's like these skills doing this kind of stuff. They're, they're dying, you know, no, nobody's taking it up, or very few are. Right, you can see it's taking shape now. We're nearly there, nearly at the bottom. In at the end of it to get a smooth finish. You don't want a smooth finish on it, but then obviously you don't want it full of trowel marks either. <clears throat> so a combination of trowels and brushes and so forth will get it looking nice. So that's that coated. Now we're going to have to leave that for a while because it's still, as you can see, very wet. So while we're waiting for that, we can then do a little bit of the pointing. Now, I don't know if the camera's picking that up there. This joint here is extremely hard cement mortar. I'm trying to get it out. We just chips a, a couple of bits of the brick so I decided to leave it now it's going to stand out because all this is going to be pointed with new so what I'm going to do is just wipe a little bit onto the top of that well it's not going to last forever but it'll colour it up and tidy it up for now so for a few years it'll look great um, but after a few years because of where this particular elevation is facing all this will be covered in green mossy muck anyway so it won't make many odds Right, so we're back onto the CLM 35 now, which needs wetted up because it's gone dry. It's gone very dry overnight because somebody forgot to put a bag on it. That's better. Now you can see the difference in colour between the two different mortars. Hence we're not use, using the, um, the other mortar for the panels, uh, for the pointing rather. <clears throat> well I had a discussion with uh, the client regarding the trawl boat. Um, some of you all know all about the trawl boat now and um, some of the new subscribers and welcome to the channel by the way any new subscribers um, it's a project that we've been working on this year it's trawl boat cottage it used to be the trawl boat inn and it has a connection with this church and um, if, if you want to know about it you can uh, have a look through some of our previous videos which are on the channel 
Anyway, getting back to it. So we've uh, been thinking about getting a wet blast done to remove the paint on the side of the building. But the price that's coming in is absolutely ridiculous. We've tried one or two now and basically they've all come up with very expensive uh, costings for doing it. So my client has decided that they want it done the same way that I did the front of the building which is basically removing it with a uh, means of a, a cut disc and a grinder and then putting a 40 grit flapper disc on it. So that's what we're going to have to do. And that's going to take a, a while to, uh, to get that paint off there because it's a vast area. But it's all part of the job. Now these bricks are uh, clay common. 80 millimeter clay common and when we say common well they were very common and um, most brick manufacturers were actually making these back then so the chances are that the back of your house or boundary wall or something like that is actually made out of this particular kind of brick if it's indeed from this era from the Victorian era and under no circumstances should you apply any cement based products to that brickwork whether it be pointing, rendering or brickwork repair because if you do over time you'll end up losing your bricks and that's not a good thing This uh, church belfry has had a lot of cement pointing done on it in the past. Before the days of when people realised that it was bad. And of course it's, it's eroded a lot of the brick faces. And the stuff that, uh, that's been used is absolutely rock hard. I mean I'm using an air chisel to remove it, that's how hard it is. If I have my way, the lot will come out. I'll be repointing the line, but unfortunately, I don't think the uh, the bishop has got the pennies to do that, or the diocese, as it possibly is. I think the vicar would love to see it all done as well. I believe that. Uh, some of his previous churches have been uh, medieval and undergone um, vast restoration so he's, uh, he's extremely interested in this kind of thing and of course if you're, if you're working on something like a medieval church the way you go about it is completely different from how we go about this and the reason for that is this is Victoria, this is fairly modern in the big picture of things. So the techniques are different from when our medieval ancestors were uh, constructing monasteries and cathedrals and chapels and you name it. Right, so this is that joint now that's impossible to get out without causing massive damage. So we're just going to smear some on it and press it well in because basically all it's going to do is it's just going to leave a, a tiniest thin layer on and stain it and like I say it'll only last a couple of years but for a couple of years it'll look fine um, and it'll weather and age with the rest of the, uh, the pointing so it'll uh, never really stand out. That's the theory anyway. It could be wrong, it might fall out tomorrow. But I don't have a lot of choice, I'm not allowed to basically use grinders on anything, and that's the only way of getting that out of there is to do it with a, a diamond blade, a thin diamond blade. But uh, I think if uh, I was doing that and the architect or somebody turned up, I'd be in 
trouble. So we're not doing that. And yes, I know it'd be a better way of doing it than smearing some on, but we have to go with what the powers that be tell us. It is a grade two listed structure and there are certain rules of what you can and can't do. Now these bricks here are not in bad nick at all. We've still got the Harris, um, or most of them, and the base, of course. You know, it's all of a good saturation this this morning so you know if you are thinking of having a do at the old line pointing one of your most important things is the, the saturating your, your masonry before you start and that would be if it was brick or stone you've got, you've got to saturate it because if you don't the masonry is going to suck all the moisture out of the line almost immediately and basically that line will then just turn to powder I think that's what's happened here in the past, in all honesty. I think somebody's uh, done it and they've not saturated the walls and often they've possibly not done the cherishing correctly and it's failed. Um, because they use a, a 3.5 NHL which does set actually quite hard and you can scrape it out with your thumbnail. That's how soft it is so something's gone wrong there. And with this that we're doing, you know, it's, it's cherishing sheets are going on and they're staying there for a couple of weeks and they're getting wet every day for a couple of weeks. Plus the, the weather itself, you know, we've had a lot of rain and the air's just full of moisture. So uh, it's got a good chance of uh, carbonating nicely. when it comes to winter and you, you worry there might be a light frost you can always add to your mortar what they call a polyzin which could be something like a bit of a bit of chalk dust or a bit of uh, stone dust i tend to use stone dust and that just helps with the uh the setting speeds it up a little bit and i'm not talking about it speeds it up in a matter of hours you know we're talking you know days weeks but it just helps to keep that uh Frost at bay if it's a light frost. I mean, personally, I wouldn't recommend trying it if there's going to be frosty weather, but sometimes at the end of the season, if you're running behind on a project, which it looks like we will be this year, um, you can get away with it by doing that and then double, even triple wrapping it in your cherishing sheets to keep that frost off it. Even with a, a cement based uh, mortar, you've got to be careful with frost because frost will damage that as well. So <clears throat> just be uh, aware of that if you're ever doing anything with a bit of the old sand and cement in winter because it will have you and destroy whatever you're doing. Basically, water within the, the mortar freezes. And you can imagine what that was to the uh, chemical composition of the, uh, the mortar. Right, 
Right, and there we go. So as usual, we'll let that pull in for a bit and then we can pack it. So I'm going to have a little break for a minute now from filming and we'll catch you shortly. Right, what you can see now is in the deeper areas I have put um, some bits of crushed brick in there. And the reason I've done that is to strengthen it, kind of reinforce it a bit. Because you don't want really, really thick um, lime in there with uh, nothing to kind of hold it together. So it, it just, it's, I suppose it's like concrete, isn't it? You know, it has bits of stone in it. Um, but if you were doing, say you were doing like a, a stone wall and you had big gaps, you'd put in what they call pins, which are little bits of stone, um, just to, to fill out the deep spots. And that's pretty much what we're doing there. And as you can see, we've got the, uh, the pointing on there now. So we're about to uh, put on another coat to this decorative panel. Right. <clears throat> Very chilly today again. Got a fleece undercoat on today. making sure that you, you push it round the stone and you you form forming shapes you not know, you don't want it flat It makes me wonder back then did they bring in a, a specialist to do this a cobbler or did the brick masons do it I mean in today's world everybody has a go at everything but back then your trade was your trade and you you didn't get involved with other trades so it makes me wonder did they have a, a cobbler come in Surely to do the uh, panels because there's quite a few of these panels on this church. And right round it on various levels. Because there would have been people in the area that uh, specialised in cobbling because, there's, like I said, there's a lot of walls that are done in it. I think there's a couple of buildings in Lytham as well that are still uh, still cobbled. Although there's one of them that's in a poor state, I think they're going to end up having to take it down, which is such a shame. It's an old barn.
on that bottom brick, just plunge it out or bell it out. So any water that comes down is not taking the Harris off the uh, edge of the brick. Very therapeutic undertaking this kind of work. if I had every single panel to do on here I'll probably get Ian the, uh, the cobbler in to do them because um, it's quite time consuming obviously I have to get this job uh, completed in a house somewhere at the moment. And again, where it's on the edge of the Harris there, we just bell it out and it just assists with that rain hitting the brickwork without damaging the Harris. You can hear something above walking about. It must be a bird of some description. Yep, it's a pigeon, I can hear it. It's saying something about cutlery. Look at the spoon, look at the spoon, look at the spoon. You might be able to hear it there, I don't know. Right, so. There we go. It's going to be several hours now before uh, before this is set. Um, enough to go to the next stage. So again, what we'll do, we'll carry on with the other two panels we've got to do and the rest of the pointing. So that just gives you a little insight into uh, how to rejoint the cobbled panel. I shall come back to you later when we're doing the next stage because we don't want to bore you too much with it. So we shall catch you in a bit. Now that is pretty much what it looked like in 1890 when the tower was first built. 
with the penny roll tuck point in and the cobble in and how we finish it is can you see that you get on the camera a little brush anyway and we just stroke it in like so making sure that it's uh, pushed in around the cobble itself Now this has been left to, uh, to set in a bit, I'll just give it a, a little gentle spray with the hose. Just so we can brush it up and get a nice, nice finish on it. I mean this this will now last 150 here again. Back to what it was, exactly what it was when it was uh, here in 1890. And once we've uh, we've got it all shaped and nice, we can then uh, give the piece of cobble a little clean up, and then that's it. It's restored back to its original look. Of course this is uh, a fine line mortar, like I said it's, uh, you can actually use it for doing your line plaster, it's that fine. That's why it's, uh, it's brushing up nicely like this. If it was uh, the other one that we're using for the pointing, it'd be a bit coarse, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't come up as nice. Anyway, that gives you a general idea. I'll, uh, I'll play around with that and get a bit more refined. Um, so it looks like that one. And that's how you do it. Now that looks lovely. And that is an 1890s look. Right, I think it's lunchtime. So we shall see you after lunch. And that's that panel now complete. All three bits of uh, cobble now finished. In on that little bit is done. Done it in the penny roll. It's the only bit I'm going to do in penny roll though because uh, I just wanted one panel um, as it was originally. The rest of it up here it'll just get the churning brush routine. Bits of stone to, to joint in and a bit up there. And then that'll be this side of the bell tower completely finished which is good one uh, one section done right now I'm going for my lunch we'll see you after lunch well it's uh, three o'clock Friday just had a, a very close call there both phones fell off the scaffolding slid down the roof of the church and ended up on the path at the front of the church. Now they've probably gone down about about 40, 45 foot and I thought to myself yep they've gone that's two new phones needed. Not a mark on either one of them. How weird and thank goodness for that. 
Right, well, I think we'll cut this video uh, for this week because there's nothing really interesting to speak of now to, to show you. Um, it's just a bit of pointing now. Uh, we've seen that all week, so we'll, uh, we'll cut it there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's little uh, video. And we shall see you next week for another episode of Messing About with an Old Church.